Hey, this is Zara at Reviews on HD, and what do you get when you mix survival scavenging similar to what's found in the Fallout series, an environment that reminds me a lot of Far Cry 2 with some beaches tossed in, Borderlands style weapon collecting, and zombies? Oh, just a little title called Dead Island, which released in North America in September of 2011. Now, I really enjoyed playing this game over the last week. It's always a good thing when I'm ready to sit down and write a review, and I have to stop and really try to figure out what exactly I didn't like about the game that I just finished playing. When it becomes difficult to point out the downsides, that usually means it's a pretty solid game, and that's exactly what you're getting with this one. I should point out this review is based off my first 10 hours of single player, as I did not test out the online multiplayer past, just making sure that it worked, which it did. It's also worth noting this is a patched and updated version of the game. With all that said, let's get into the review. Man, this is a gory game, and I mean extremely brutally bone-chilling gory. According to the official wiki, it did not release on schedule in Germany because of the amount of violence and gore found in the title. If mutilating zombies sounds like it would make your stomach churn, then you're probably not going to have a lot of fun on here. Now, I didn't think I was going to enjoy this title very much since it seemed to be more focused on using melee weapons opposed to the tried-and-true mow-em-down machine gun and shotgun style, but once I saw the combat system in motion firsthand, my thought process quickly changed. Every swing caused a different reaction based on the type of weapon that I was using and where the blow landed. With sharp weapons you can hack off limbs, which for some fights didn't end until I chopped off both arms and the head to finish the zombie off. With blunt weapons like baseball bats or wrenches you instead break their bones, and it was always funny breaking both arms and watching a zombie fling them around like wet noodles. There was also a really great variation to the different zombie character models. I didn't feel like I was killing the same zombie over and over again. They also did a great job of adding some personality to each zombie, and switching up their attack styles enough to keep me guessing on when I needed to swing or when I needed to back up. Now, I did come across one technical issue with some pretty odd textures and some delayed texture load ins, but overall the game looks and runs pretty good. horror genre movie or even a game just isn't as good without some spooky music and solid sound effects and this game excels in both. Every time I heard a zombie scream off in the distance it always got me paranoid backing me into a corner as I observed my surroundings to make sure there wasn't anything trucking my way. The music really never became too intrusive to what's going on. It remains in the distant background, usually has a very soft tone, but it presents itself enough to help rack your nerves when nothing is going on. Approaching the beach, you can hear tropical birds and very peaceful, calming sound effects that you would expect to hear at a real ocean front, and the ocean actually sounds like the ocean. If this game didn't have zombies, you would want to visit this island, and the sound really drives that home. stay alive you have to be very resourceful. Your weapons degrade pretty quickly so you're constantly switching and repairing your weapons, usually keeping your more powerful weapons in reserve for the truly hard to take down zombies. And since your cash has to go towards med kits, upgrades, and creating new weapons, you really have to balance out what is most important for your current situation. Repairing or upgrading your best weapon for a thousand dollars when all of your weapons need to be repaired early in the game really isn't going to be your best bet in most circumstances. There was also several instances that I had to drop a decent weapon to pick up a less powerful one simply because I knew I wouldn't be able to afford to repair it anytime soon. Your zombie predators that you're going to be doing battle against are unusually crafty, sneaking up behind you, flanking you. It's sometimes hard to tell what type of attack they're going to hit you with, but even the most basic zombie on here is going to be dangerous. They do a good job of chewing you down to the bone like a KFC chicken wing if you let them surround you. In some circumstances, even if you know the attack patterns, they can still be hard to deal with. Now, I didn't die very much during Act 1, but I really started racking in the deaths in Act 2 when the game ups the difficulty. Avoiding large packs of zombies, running, and even using gas tanks to your advantage are keys to staying alive on here. But if you do manage to take a dirt nap, the game respawns you after a few seconds, pretty close to where you died, minus a small percentage of your current cash.
There was so much that I appreciated about this game, such as the map and marker system which were both easy to use and the dotted line that directed me where to go only led me astray a couple times. Overall it was much more effective than some of the other open world sandbox titles that I've played over the last couple years. The level up perks, inventory limits, weapon system and customization were awesome. Driving vehicles and running over zombies were surprisingly fun. It doesn't rival Need for Speed, but for this type of game it's exceptionally good. The only real complaint that I have on this one is that it can become a bit tedious traveling back and forth in the same areas early in the game if you're doing a lot of the side quests, but with as good as the environments look on here it wasn't really that much of an issue. With Dead Island Riptide shaping up to appear to be a pretty good title set to release later this year, now would be a great time to pick this game up if you haven't played it yet to get your character ready for Riptide as it has been announced that you can load your original Dead Island character and progression into the next game. And after 10 hours of game time, I'd only seen half of what this game has to offer and I also skipped over a lot of side quests in the process, so there's definitely a lot of meat to this game. And it's one title I would highly recommend picking up if you like open world sandbox role playing games in the style of Fallout, Borderlands, or Far Cry. Anyways, this is Zero at Reviews on HD, and thanks for stopping by.